Welcome to Snap Lens Visual Design Education, your go-to partners for mastering Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom. We're unlocking creative editing solutions and diving deep into the world of photography. I'm Ty Schwartz, and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this journey. Together, we'll explore the latest techniques, tips, and tricks to elevate your visual storytelling to the next level. From mastering the basics to pushing the boundaries of your creativity, SnapLens Visual Design Education is here to empower you with the knowledge and skills you need to unleash your artistic potential. So grab your favorite beverage, fire up your editing software, and join us as we embark on this exciting journey together. Let's turn our visions into masterpieces, one click at a time. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Ty Schwartz with Snap Lens Photography and Educational Services. Uh, we are driving the back roads of Texas. We're just uh, on the outskirts of Kayleen, Texas. Uh, and I'm trying to think of a way to describe what I'm going to go about doing today. And um, one of the things that I love about being a photographer is I don't have to pigeonhole myself into one certain genre uh, in photography. <clears throat> What I do like is when I have an idea, I can uh, kind of vet the idea. So today, our uh, topic of subject is we're going to do some uh, landscape photography. Uh, we're going to do shoot uh, probably vertical. We're going to probably shoot some HDR, uh, drag the shutter a little bit so I can get some silky smooth uh, water. I'm going to do some freezing of the um, shutter speed or speed up the shutter speed so I can get frozen water. Uh, I might, uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to take a flash and introduce a portrait. Uh, it seems like a lot of work because we're going to end up hiking about a mile and a half into where the waterfall's at. Uh, we're going to be at Grand Bend, I'm sorry, not Grand Bend, it's Colorado Bend State Park. Uh, it's a beautiful state park here in the state of Texas. And uh, I thought this would be something really interesting to go and talk about and uh, show video wise uh, for YouTube and also um, our educational services. I thought this would be a great course to talk about how we came up with the idea and um, how we created the image, how we edited the image, and how we get it set up for printing it out and hanging out. So, um, so today is going to be just basically landscaping day. Uh, I think tomorrow or maybe Friday, I think Friday we're playing golf, uh, so I might not be doing photographs on Friday, but I'm thinking about um, tomorrow doing a portrait session. And one of the things that I'm going to like about this portrait session is it's going to be completely different from other things that I've done. It's not a high school senior portrait. It's kind of a, a, a young uh, adult uh, tween, uh, a sixth grader, and uh, another uh, little girl who's in second grade, eight years old. Uh, but we're going to have a little bit of fun because in Texas right now, the blue bonnets are blooming like crazy. And there's tons of beautiful wildflowers that I'm seeing all over the place. So my idea kind of is to create an image uh, with these beautiful flowers. But at the same time, I'm going to introduce a clear umbrella. Uh, I got some ball pit balls and I'm going to use the ball pit balls as raindrops. And then from there, uh, I'm going to try to freeze the uh, balls and also drag the shutter so I get some type of movement uh, on the balls. I haven't figured out all the details on that yet, but I think um, it's a good idea. I think we're going to have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, plus, we have ball pit balls that we can throw at each other later on. Um, okay, so as I was talking about, so just in two days, I'm doing portraits, I'm doing landscape. and one of the things that I, I do like about the way I create uh, images is when I travel, I, I'll do travel photography purposely set up for uh, stock photography that I can upload to stock photography. Uh, I, I do love focusing on uh, fine art se high school senior portraits. I think that's a very interesting because with high school seniors, you have such uniqueness and variety of uh, personality types. And one of the things I've always disliked about high school senior portraits is um, the fact that it, well, it's Virginia Beach. And one of the things that I've always disliked about just doing generic photography is just following somebody around, having them smile, take their picture. Uh, that's a lot of work. And to me, there's not a lot of thought process into it. 
So I like to take studio lights. I like to add uh, elements of texture and shape and design. And I want to create and plan out uh, a portrait image. I just don't want to, oh, let's go take a picture and then walk outside and take a picture. Now, of course, we could do that. As a photojournalist, I did it for years. Uh, hey, I need you to go over here. We need to tell a story. We need to create these images. Uh, and that's that's not a problem, but that's not studio lights. That's working as a photojournalist. Um, and by working as a photojournalist, we're looking at the elements and the purity and the environment. And then we're moving to the sun. We're selecting lenses to work with um, the, the lighting situation, also the angles of what we're shooting at. Um, so for this shoot that's coming up uh, out of the waterfall, I don't know exactly what I'm going to need. So I brought a 70 to 200 uh, zoom lens. I brought my portrait lens. I always bring my portrait lens lightly because I have been photographing and creating portrait landscape items. And I'm thinking that maybe today I'll use that just for a little bit of fun. And then I also brought out the 24 to 70 millimeter. Um, <clears throat> now, when I do shoot landscapes, I tend to shoot them vertically. And when I do shoot them vertically, I will uh, shoot uh, an underexposure by one, overexposure by one. I'll shoot a perfectly good exposure. And then uh, I'll create an HDR. But I don't really create like a heavy, heavy-handed HDR. It's more of I want to get a lot of details into the uh, shadows. And I want to capture the highlights. So by underexposing, I'm grabbing the highlights. Well, today is an extremely uh, clear day in Texas. It's very bright. Uh, so we're going to get a lot of glowing from the ground. And I'm going to end up doing probably uh, a five to seven uh, exposure exchange. So I'll go almost two stops under, two stops over, one stop over, one stop under, and then perfectly exposed. That way I get as much highlights and shadows as I can. But it also depends on which situation is that I get there uh, to the location. Uh, but yeah, so so really, it, everything is light dependent. Uh, I have my light meter with me, so I'm going to take a couple of light meter readings. I'm going to adjust um, the ambient uh, lighting. Uh, one of the things that uh, is, is disappointing about today is there's no clouds. Did you notice there's no clouds? There's no clouds. So uh, we're going to get some, uh, if, we, if we photograph and include the sky, um, we're going to have to think about maybe adding clouds later on in the image. Uh, and I, I think at one point uh, I am going to talk about using the generative fill in Adobe Photoshop because I think the generative fill is a great tool if it's used correctly and used the correct terminology and terms. But I also have uh, photographs of um, clouds that I can always add into it. Uh, when you do have a deep blue sky like this, it's really easy to add clouds and make them match nicely because there's not a lot of uh, heavy contrast or what we call haloing around the clouds that you would get. Um, so that's, that's kind of my thought process there. Um, but, uh, I just wanted to talk generally, you know, what kinds of photography I liked and, um, thought processes as I'm getting ready to go out for a photo shoot, what I'm thinking about, um, some of the things I'm thinking about. Okay. So I talked about my lenses. So I have the 80 millimeter, I have the 24 to 70, I have the 70 to uh, 200 millimeter. Um, I think if I would have went with a, um, uh, 17 to 35, um, uh, I think I would have basically carry too many lenses. I always carry too many lenses to begin with. But I, I've stopped shooting with the super wide lens on landscapes uh, after listening to a, a great photographer uh, on landscape photography, uh, Dennis Hammond. He uh, talked about how he photographed a lot of things using these 200 uh, to 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Uh, so I, I started shooting a little bit more like that over the last couple of years because I do like shooting vertical. I do a 20% overlap. And by doing that 20% overlap, it allows me to adjust and create that solid, uh, beautiful uh, landscape image. I set it up for perspective and I'm not worried about too much when it comes to that. Now, I don't do more than two or three uh, left or right. So I'll do one in the center, one to the right, one to the left. Anything more than that, I think it becomes too skewed. Um, 
but especially when you're shooting uh, horizontal, I'm sorry, vertical. Uh, so there's that uh, when it comes to that. Now, I will sometimes move with my feet, but I try to, to stay within the same perspective and not do too much with uh, the changes. So that's, I think it's an interesting uh, concept right there. Uh, the other thing that I, I did today is I brought a, uh, a heavy tripod. I, I need to get a travel tripod that's way lighter. Uh, I think I'm going to go end up going carbon fiber so I don't break my back on a regular basis carrying this thing around. Um, I, I have been pretty dedicated to the uh, brand names of the equipment that I've used. So um, I, I'll probably stick with that. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do on that yet. So uh, between the camera, is I'm going to use a Nikon D850 um, and basically just kind of light meter read take some photographs, uh, talk about depth of field. We're going to do some rack focusing. I want to create some things that are in the foreground. Uh, I want to create some uh, movement along the waterfalls. And so I'll be able to talk about the exposure triangle a little bit, which I think is a very interesting topic, uh, exposure triangle in general. Okay, so that's going to be it for this idea and thought on this podcast. Uh, definitely, if you're interested and you like what you're hearing, please leave a comment. Uh, go to snaplens.com or you can go to snaplens.blog. Check us out. Like us. Um, and I think our uh, blogs are now, or our podcasts are now up on YouTube. So you can always go to snaplens at YouTube uh, and check that out. And uh, just leave comments, make suggestions. If you'd like to learn about something, I would love to share uh, my ideas and thoughts. Uh, behind some things that I've learned in photography over the last 40 years. All right, have a great day. My name is Ty Swartz, and I want to thank you for listening.